The Kansas City Chiefs have officially signed 11 UDFAs. Today, we grade each and every one of them. Welcome into the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Jace Andrews, and we certainly do appreciate you hanging out with us. If you are pumped for this Kansas City Chiefs 2024 draft class, do me a favor, go down to the like section and tap that like button. I'd certainly appreciate it. It always helps out the show. And hey, I know I'm pumped, so hope you join me and hit that like button as well. Let's start off with the first UDFA we're going to talk about, and that is the running back out of TCU, Imani Bailey. Now, we're going to give him an A grade because, honestly, the Chiefs should have drafted a running back, in my personal opinion, as they don't really have somebody besides Clyde Edwards-Alaire or Isaiah Pacheco. I know P. Ryan is there, but I don't know if I trust him just yet. Then Eric Prince, who was UDFA last year, maybe he makes a statement, but I like what Imani Bra Bailey brings to the table 5'7", 206, pretty good poundage for the running back size. Technically, technically did have a draftable grade because there were 257 picks in this year's draft. He was the 257th prospect we had in our system, so technically was a draftable guy. Now, spent a couple of seasons in Louisiana as well, so kind of seeing his split stats, over 1,000 rushing yards with 254 carries with TC with a 5.7 average. And then Louisiana had 112 carries for 702 yards and eight touchdowns, average north of six. Also a decent receiving back, has some yardage in that facet as well. So given this guy an A, I could potentially see him being a real contributor to the Chiefs team in some facet in this season. Another running back, Carson Steele out of UCLA. I'm going B- minus here because he honestly is an interesting guy for a running back position. Six foot, 228, he has a lot of positives to his game, but nothing is like sticking out to me. Nothing's like, oh, that's going to be great, or that's why he can make an NFL roster. Now, his stats, though, pretty solid. 847 at UCLA this past year with six touchdowns, but really performed at Ball State just a year ago with over 1,500 yards and 12 TDs. He was a baller at Ball State. Yes, that was a pun intended. 5.4 on the average. I mean, this guy was doing pretty, pretty good. But if you see his form, you see his body type, I kind of see him as more of a fullback type guy if you just buff him out a bit. Needs a little bit more weight, but I think he could be a fullback type guy rather than a running back just because you think about the great fullbacks in this league, one that notably comes to mind, Kyle Juszczyk. I think Steele reminds me a lot of him and his body type. So, Kind of be interesting, the Chiefs really don't use a fullback all that often, if ever, so uh, would be kind of cool to see them have one, first of all, and second of all, they would have to train Steele to do that, but it definitely could work. Who is your favorite Chiefs UDFA? Is there somebody that you really, really like, somebody that stuck out? Let me know down in the comments section who you are excited to see in rookie minicamp with these UDFAs. Let's continue on here with the offensive lineman, Ethan Driscoll. Now, I'm going to go B with him because he should have been drafted, I truly think. He was our number 237th overall prospect, number, the tw number 20 overall offensive tackle. 6'8", 313, size is there. Reminds me of Joe Alt for the size and body type, just not exactly the technically only technical soundness of what Joe Alt has. Listen, we had him as a draftable guy. I had him in a couple of mock drafts for the Kansas City Chiefs as well, so... The fact of the matter that you didn't have to draft them, you signed him after the fact, I think that's a really solid thing right there. So I don't know what's going to happen because the offensive line is kind of an interesting beast right now with pretty solid starters and even some solid second stringers. But uh, I, I think he could potentially be on the squad for a practice squad formation or something of like that. So I'm going to go with a B for him. Fabian Lovett Sr., the defensive lineman out of Florida State, going with an A- minus for him. And the reason being... This guy was an absolute amazing player at FSU and just got overlooked this draft, to be quite frank. 169th overall prospect in our system. Listen, you're signing this guy? That's crazy. 17th overall defensive tackle. Great size for a defensive tackle, by the way. 6'3", 316. Got some speed. I think the reason you see him as a UDFA, he was overshadowed by a couple of the other FSU defensive linemen. Jared Verse, Braden Fisk. Both those guys headed to the Rams. And Fabian Lovett just kind of got overlooked. You never really saw him because there was other people on the defensive line that were putting in the work. However, I think he was also putting in the work. I think he was great. And in the times that I got to watch Florida State this year, he was exceptional. And especially in the ACC championship game, 
played really, really great. So I'm excited to see what he can do with Kansas City. Honestly, I think given the defensive tackle position is uh, a slot that I could see some guys making making a, a name for themselves in, wouldn't mind seeing him make the squad, at least in the practice squad format, but could easily see him on the 53-man roster as well if he puts his mind to it. All right, the hardest name of the day, Iabi Oki Anoma. I'm going to go with a B for him. Uh, he's a defensive lineman as well. He's coming from Charlotte. Originally, he was recruited and signed with Alabama. However, he never really panned out. He was actually the higher-graded prospect than Micah Parsons. I mean, overall, though, wasn't the greatest. 299 are overall rankings, 20 in the edge. So one of those guys who out of high school looked great but never really formed into the player that people expected him to be. So kind of something to take a look at just because you know the talent was there at one point in time. And we all know, I mean, if you're a top prospect in any facet and you don't just absolutely stink in college, you're going to be able to get something of an NFL contract. And that's kind of what we saw here with the obby is he did okay enough to get himself a, a, a chance at the NFL. And, and now we wait to see uh, how much of a chance that is and how much he can perform to earn that chance with the Chiefs. But his intangibles, really, really good. Just takes a little bit of training. Have to wait and see what happens. We don't have to wait to see what happens for Xavier Worthy because he was the number 28 overall pick for the Kansas City Chiefs. Actually, fun fact, he got a tattoo of the Chiefs logo and the uh, pick he was in, round one, pick number 28. So that was pretty cool. Saw that today on social media. If you want to get your Xavier Worthy jersey, though, want to be ready to rock it, he's already got the number one number officially confirmed, which, by the way, Xavier Worthy in a one jersey with the Chiefs, whoo, spicy. Marquise Brown and Xavier Worthy are going to tear it up, so make sure you get your jersey for Xavier. Chatsports.com slash Worthy. We'll have that link in the comments in the description. I promise you you're going to want to check it out because I don't know about you, when Xavier Worthy scores that first touchdown in week one on a 60-yard bomb, I want to have my jersey on and cheering for Mr. Xavier. So Chatsports.com slash Worthy and get these jerseys right now. Let's continue on with our UDFA grades. Jalen White McLean. C plus is my grade for this. Now, McLean, another edge here. This one out of Old Dominion. The reason I go C+, plus, at Old Dominion, he didn't really do much. It, it wasn't like he did anything special there. I think he's a great size for an edge rusher. I love the taller, more compact edge rushers. 6'4", 254. He's got some speed to him, so like, he never did anything great. Nothing was special at Old Dominion. But again, I think the body type of his is actually set up perfectly for what the new age edge rushers are for Kansas City and for the NFL, to be quite honest. I know he's not the big size of George Karloftis, but he's kind of reminding me of like a, a smaller Felix Duque Ozoma. Obviously, he does not have the intangibles, but I mean, that's why I gave him a C plus. I think it's a right about average signing for a UDFA, nothing special. Uh, we'll have to see what exactly happens with him, though, and if he makes the squad. Curtis Jacobs. Now, he may be my favorite UDFA of the entire NFL, not just the Chiefs, the entire NFL. I'm going A+, plus, and I would give him an A+++++, plus 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 because this guy, I think, is going to fit under the squad as a at least 53-man roster guy right away. Number 203 overall prospect, or a 15 linebacker in our system, Perfect size for the Chiefs linebacking core, 6'1", 241. Very similar to a Nick Bolton-ish type player, uh, a Drew Tranquil type. So he fits in well. I, I like this guy a lot. I think he has the intangibles that are needed. His football IQ is very, very high. If you've watched the show for a long time, you know that the way I judge linebackers, it's not on your stats. Uh, well, it's a little bit on your stats, but I also want to see how often you're around the ball because – for the defense, the linebacker is the quarterback. He's the game manager. He's going to go in there. He's going to be able to just maybe track wherever it goes. And if you're around the ball a lot, that means you know what's going on on the offense side of the ball. And that's one thing Curtis Jacobs did. Uh, his coverage stats are okay. He's not going to be put into too much coverage, situation with, coverage situations with the Chiefs. Obviously, the way they use their linebacker court, especially in the middle linebacker slot, which is where I see him rotating in and out of with Nick Bolton. Um, I don't think he's going to be doing too much coverage stuff. But his stats overall, really good. Four sacks in 2022, 2.5 in 2023. Had an interception in both 2021 and 2022. So uh, really, really good stats overall, uh, considering he went to the Nitty Lions as well. Pretty established college and a Big Ten that has great differences year in and year out. Uh, I'm excited to see. And I know I said it, but 
I wouldn't be surprised if I would be surprised if he didn't make the team. To be quite honest, I, I expect him on the 53-man roster. I know they'll have Jack, Jack Cochran. He's great. Obviously, a couple of other good run, good linebackers, but I just don't see how Curtis Jacobs isn't a top six linebacker in this core. I love Cam Jones. I love Jack Cochran. I don't trust Cole Christensen just because I haven't gotten to see him all that much. All that much. So I think I think Jacobs gets in. Uh, I think he steps into that slot. He becomes the rotational linebacker for Nick Bolton. And uh, th th that's that, you know. Pretty solid, honestly, too deep here. Because when Drew Tranquil's tired, I trust Cam Jones. Once Nick Bolton's tired, from what I've seen from Curtis Jacobs, I think he could I think he could do it. So I would put him in. Then I trust Jack Cochran as well. Obviously, love Leo Chanon. This is a really, really good linebacking. I would honestly say probably top five linebacker core in the NFL. Grade the signing of Curtis Jacob. Do you like what you saw from the kid? Do you like the stats that I brought up? Do you like my points I brought up? Let me know down there in the comment section. A, if you like this signing. F, you hate it. C, for average signing. B and D are your in-betweens. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of this signing. Reggie Brown is an A- minus to me. Now, this UDFA is somewhat of an interesting case. Wide receiver out of James Madison. and His intangibles are great. He is able to have the stats to back himself up. A thousand yards at James Madison this year. The reason why it's an A minus, not an AA plus, when you need a wide receiver, to be quite frank, it's just James Madison. It's just you never really have, I guess, solid competition that I think you're facing against. And the transition from James Madison to the NFL is going to be a tough one. Now, I think in the clips I've seen from Reggie Brown, he can do it, but I mean, overall, I really, really do like this pickup as well. I think he's probably second to Curtis Jacobs, probably somewhere in that area. I'd probably say it's Jacobs, Reggie, uh, and then Amadi Bailey are probably my top three UDFA guys that I like for this team. So really like what I saw from Reggie, and I, I do think he has a very legitimate spot to get at least make the practice squad. I kind of see him as the Cornell power replacement where he'll go into the practice squad formation for the next three three, three years-ish, and hopefully he can make the team soon enough. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but I do think he'll be on the, on the practice squad. That's my guess for him. All right, some other UDFA signings I want to get through. Uh, just kind of give you all the grades here. Christian Rowland, uh, cornerback out of USC. He's okay. Nothing special. Overall, though, needs some cornerback depth, uh, so I don't mind that. Miles Battle, though. I'm going to give him an A. He is great size-wise. 6'4", has the perfect body type. Reminds me of a Brian Cook-like guy, just at cornerback, a little faster, so... Really, really like his stuff, and I think he could actually be a legitimate case to be at a rotational cornerback in the Chiefs squad, honestly, right now. Uh, do have to wait and see, obviously, how the rest of the cornerback room shapes up. You can obviously tell Trent McDuffie will be the nickelback. You'll have Joshua Williams and Jalen Watson as your CB1 and 2. There's a slot for Miles Battle to be in there and be a rotational guy, so I wouldn't see that. Nick Torres, it's an average thing. It's nothing special out of Villanova, and my bigger thing is your offensive line is, is just in need of depth. This fits the role. Ryan Rico, Rick Howe, excuse me, the punter out of BYU. It's a B. He's the backup punter. Matt Ariza is your guy, and hopefully the punt god is back. But nice to have somewhat of a guy who could just maybe on the practice squad in case you needed him. There was some rookie camp invites. Chiefs right now still have a couple options and some slots open on their roster. And so they invited 10 people by the count we have right now. I guarantee you they'll go up, so do not worry about that. We will, <laughs> we will have you covered with that. But, uh, yeah, Spencer Sanders, Trey Plotts, Jaron Havoc, Zach Mathis, Deshaun McCarthy, Mario Kendricks, Bryce Gallagher, Bryce Houston, Sam Lockett, and Noah Rauschenberg are all 10 invites we have note of right now. But we will for sure uh, kind of keep you updated with all of that. Speaking of keeping you updated, do want to let you know if you missed yesterday's video, I am going to be pursuing another career opportunity. And so this will be my final week covering the Chiefs for Chat Sports. Don't worry, though. I know I'm leaving, and it's sad, but guess what? I know the guys at Chat Sports here got you covered, and there's some amazing, amazing people that worked here. So do not worry. You're going to have some awesome content throughout the summer, and when the season rolls around, you're going to have some awesome watch parties as well. So I encourage you, please stick around. Please keep watching. And if you just watched for me, try them out, because guess what? I know that whoever they find the next announcer on here, which they're going to find really soon, He's going to be amazing, so I, I promise you, make sure you check it out. I want to say a big thank you to my bosses, James Yoder and Brett Scott, for just giving me this opportunity, and obviously just a, it really, really enjoyed everything, along with my producers that I've had throughout there, Sam Brown, uh, Matthew McCullough, a couple other guys that just really come here. Colin Brown obviously came in here and 
really, really appreciate everybody who just was able to make this experience an amazing one. But time to go off on a new adventure for my career. And uh, obviously, make sure you follow me on Twitter. I'll keep you updated. Still going to be talking Chiefs. Still going to be talking ball on there. So uh, make sure you follow me on there. But Chiefs Kingdom, it was a pleasure. And uh, I, I do wish everybody watching our side uh, the best. And, and hopefully, we stay in touch on Twitter. So appreciate all y'all. Cannot wait for you to see what Chat Sports has next for you on the Chiefs Report. But for me, for the final time, Chiefs Kingdom, peace out.